As documentary filmmaker, I've always wanted to have the film look added to my movies or my films. I usually find LUTs online kind of gimmicky. They never looked like I shot it on film. So a while ago, I stumbled upon something called Dehancer, which is like a film look plugin that you can add to your editing program. I installed the program. Dehancer was generous enough to give me a free trial to try it out. They don't have a saying on this video, but I actually wanted to tell you what parts of this tool I use for my films. Like I don't use everything. So right now I have two shots. They are both the same, but I have two ways of using Gehancer. I shoot log on Sony, so the color profile is S-Log3. You have two ways to do the color space transform. The first one is the normal one that we know in DaVinci Resolve. Of course, first of all, we need to go to color management and change to DaVinci Resolve by gamut intermediate. And because I'm using a Mac, I will be setting the output color space to Rec 709A. And after that, we can make our node three. These nodes are the ones that I usually use. That's without the enhancer. When I use the enhancer, I found out that there's another way. The first way to color grade your footage is the normal one that we all know. We have the color space transform in and out, and then all the nodes between them are the you know color grading part. So the color space transform in would be from Sony to DaVinci white gamut, because DaVinci white gamut gives us the highest flexibility to color grade. And then the CST out would be the Vinci White Gamut to Rec 709 and Rec 709A because I'm using a Mac. And the color space transform out would be the Vinci White Gamut to Rec 709. This is the general way that we use the Vinci Resolve. So I'm going to enable the color space transform in and out. And you can see that this is the final look that I'm going to have if I don't color grade at all. This is like just color space transform from normal colors to Rec 709. I did adjust the white balance a little bit. I made it a little bit warmer and I had added some saturation, contrast and dehaze. Then the final one would be the enhancer. So what you can do is just add a node and then go to your library in your effects, go all the way down and choose the enhancer pro. The first look is incredibly bad because you need to adjust everything and refine everything. So the first thing we will do is change the input source because we've, we've chosen DaVinci Resolve Wide Gamut Intermediate. That's why we'll choose that. We can just adjust the exposure compensation, everything. I would advise you to disable your film look just to get a sense of what you're looking at and adjust your exposure and temperature and everything. I'm going to turn off most of these things. We go to quality and we do high and slow. Using this, we can adjust the temperature from here. We can adjust the exposure. I would turn down the exposure a little bit. Second of all is the film look. I would love to leave that till the end. I want to adjust everything before adding the final film look. So I'll skip the film look and go to film developer. So in film developer, you can just adjust your contrast and gamma correction. So good. Just adjust your settings to your liking. So after film developer, I would love to go to expand. I'm going to enable that. Just adjust that to your liking. After expand, we go to print. Let's enable print and go to tonal contrast. Increase the contrast a tad bit, just like that. And the color density, here we go. Next up, let's go to color head. So in the color head tab, we can adjust the yellow, blue balance, magenta, green, cyan, red. And of course, after that, we can change the tone for the shadows, midtones, and highlights. At the end, you see impact. It's like how much of this effect do you want applied to your image? So this is the final thing you do. So after adjusting the image, we have this look. If we enable and disable, we can see what effect we made. It's subtle, but it's very good. Let's go next to film grain. I actually set this up previously to 65 millimeter ISO 50, which is the best option right now because I don't like that much grain in my image, but I want this imperfection that the film look gives. You can see the grain in the trees and in the shadow area. After that, we go to halation. So in the halation part, what halation is, is the orange slash reddish hue that goes around your highlight area. But when adding halation, you can use one of the presets 
I use the mask mode to adjust all of my settings. Now you will see like a black screen. If you crank everything up, you can see this red places. These red places are the ones that are going to glow whenever you apply halation. So I messed everything up just to show you. If you disable mask mode, you'll see like a red image because we have all of these red circles or red points that are having the halation effect. I added a little bit of halation. Whenever I add halation, you will see this reddish hue that's added over any highlighted building. After that, we have the bloom effect, which is the second best effect that I wanna use. If I didn't use any of these effects in this plugin, I would use halation, bloom, and a little bit of film grain. So after adjusting the bloom effects, if you enable and disable, you see all the highlighted areas that were affected with halation, also affected with bloom. Whenever you use the mask mode, you will see these bloomy places that are the highlights of your image. And save lights is the slider that you want to use to increase and decrease the bloom effect. If you just decrease it, you'll see like a super bloomy highlighted building. Whenever you increase it, you will decrease the bloom effect. If I want to check where we are right now, this is the look before and this is the look after. Finally, we have vignetting. I already enabled that. As you can see, this is the original image without vignette and this is with vignette. Also, I prefer using mask mode. Using mask mode will give you this circle. You just, just this size and the aspect ratio. Then you turn off mask mode and you adjust the exposure and the feather. And here we are. This is the final look of the image after applying everything with the enhancer. And this is the first of two ways to apply the enhancer. The second way, which is using the enhancer as a color space transformer. We will transform the color space inside of the enhancer by choosing camera instead of going to the Vinci Resolve wide gamut. We choose camera, we go to Sony. I shot it on a ZV-E1 and it's S gamut three cine. It will give you a different look from the CST in and out that we did before. I don't know why, if we just turn everything off, we turn on just the CST in and out. Look at the difference. It's more contrasty, it's brighter. Uh, even if you turn down the exposure and compensation, it's a little bit more contrasty. I don't know which look you like more, but I can use both. It gives a slightly different look, but I like both of them. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply the exact same effects that we did before and it will also give us a different final look. I did some adjustments to the same settings that we did before so I'm not going to bother you with them. So after applying everything to the second look you can see that there's a major difference between them and especially because of the color space transform in and out here that we didn't have here. We just went to the Hanser Pro and did the color space transform inside of it. Which one would you choose? Just write down in the comment. If you want this fast look and fast editing workflow, you can use the enhancer right away. If you don't want that, if you want to adjust everything and add knots and everything, you can do that if you enjoy doing that. If you want something fast, you can just use the Dehancer Pro. You don't even need the other ones. Like if you can see here, I can have the look that I want with the enhancer alone. I love to use other stuff inside of DaVinci Resolve, add nodes and stuff. That's why I added a little bit and added the enhancer at the end for color space transform and the final film look. Both of these looks are really good and can be added to my film. Thanks for the enhancer for sponsoring this video. They don't have any saying on this video before publishing, they are seeing it as you're seeing it right now. They also have a phone app that you can use just like the plugin. It has all the features, all the bells and whistles. You can download it right away from the app store. It's available on Android and iOS. This is the actual way that I use this tool in my workflow. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thanks to Dehancer for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in the next one.